Thank you. Uh, um, I opted for the handheld mic because as I told the technician on the break, um, if I had known that there was gonna be the Madonna mic, I would have prepared some choreography to go with the presentation tonight. But um, yeah, I didn't know in advance. Next time. Um, so for the last few years, uh, among other activities, I've been working with this form that I call uh, object-oriented writing. And the first major project that I did with this form um, was, is called 16 Sculptures, in which I recreate in the medium of language 16 sculptures uh, by different artists selected quite impulsively um, from throughout the entire history of art, from the Venus of Willendorf up to uh, contemporary artists. And um, I'm just going to read the introduction to the book, which is one of the forms in which this project manifested itself. And because I think it gives a good idea of um, not just the project 16 sculptures, but what this, what object-oriented writing is. This book is the culmination of a method of writing I have been working with for the past several years, a writing that attempts to inhabit the object. That is, a writing that positions itself within the work of art while simultaneously including all the contradictions and impossibilities that come embedded within such an approach. Impossible because, of course, one can never go inside a solid object. What I'm attempting here is a metaphysics of art writing. If need be, the reader of these texts can evaluate each according to its degree of failure with regards to the original work, though in the spirit of creation, or to be precise, recreation, the cyclical nature of art's generationing. I have opted to exclude reproductions of the original sculptural works from this project and its various iterations, including the present volume. It could be suggested that the father of object-oriented writing is the Gertrude Stein of Tender Buttons, the mother, the Roland Barthes of mythologies. Though object-oriented writing is more likely their aborted fetus, having been revivified on a UFO by an extra-dimensional alien race that exists on a plane parallel to our own and returned to this reality in order to contaminate it. Unlike criticism, which is always necessarily about an object, and unlike poetry, which is inspired by, object-oriented writing takes on the task of being. As such, another writer's version of these 16 sculptures, selected according to whatever mysterious force drew me to them at various moments of my travels, would and should look very different from my own. This is a vehicle, not a school. I don't believe in definitive statements and I don't believe in endings. There's still so much more to be said and done. So, um, yeah, so the sort of, one of the iterations was this book, 16 Sculptures. Um, and a second iteration of the project was uh, an audio installation. Um, and you can sort of see the physical uh, manifestation of it here, what it looked like. Um, so this was um, what the gallery looked like. This, the exhibition was, an earlier version was shown at the Whitney Biennial, but the full version was shown at Wilkinson Gallery in 2014. So you know, you had 16 of these listening stations set up, but, um, Essentially, so what it was is you would have um, this vinyl player and the vinyl would have the title of the artwork and the artist's name on it. 
then uh, you would have these headphones that you could put on, which would essentially completely black out your vision. And then you would have the audio file, the headphones, which you could put on. And so the idea is you're listening um, to, um, my, to my recreation of the sculptures in the medium of language. And blinded, you kind of recreate the sculpture in your mind um, based on my recreation of the sculpture in the medium of language. And the actual sculpture, you know, the original is, of course, absent from the scenario. You know, there's... The sculpture isn't in the gallery, obviously, um, and there's there's no reproduction of it, um, or no visual reproduction of it, I should say. And um, the audio, the audio files, it was um, I recorded them um, as sort of a collaboration. Uh, between uh, a good friend of mine who's actually a pop musician in Berlin named Snacks. He sort of, he, he produced um, the recordings. And what we tried to do in each of the recordings, they're each different. Um, sometimes it's my voice. Sometimes, um, quite often, it is my voice, but sometimes it's been manipulated so much that you can't even really tell that it's my voice. Sometimes we use the voices of actors um, reading the texts, but what we kind of tried to do um, was sort of um, capture the sort of texture, um, the textural and textual <laughs> qualities of the sculptural works through the audio recording. Um, not just the sort of textual qualities of the sculptures, but also the textural <laughs> qualities of the texts, I guess you could say. So each one is quite different. So um, in lieu of doing sort of a traditional reading tonight, I'm going to play a selection um, of each of these um, recordings for you. And um, so in the spirit of the way that they were originally presented in the gallery, albeit this is quite different because it's, it's you know, amplified sound rather than the intimate experience you get of listening to, on the headphones. But if you'd like, um, you know, you're free to sort of close your eyes. Um, what's, what I'm going to do is up on the screen, the title of each individual work will be projected. So when it changes, you can open your eyes and peek and see like which sculpture it is if you want. But, um, you know, but you're free otherwise to close your eyes. This might be the only literary event you attend in your life where the writer tells you you can close your eyes during the reading. So, you know, maybe take advantage of it. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, I'll wake you up when it's time to eat. Um, uh, but otherwise, uh, enjoy. I just feel transsexualized by this vermin. <laughs> Go out of despair. Up end the skyless, and then words get drawn out. Melody of silence played on brick accordion, and they layered fathomly. Ford a finger. Ford a finger. Ford a fi 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 finger. Ford a fi 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 finger. Here comes old finger foot. Lemon the lungs. Don't give it an oven. The wood is a child. I just feel transsexualized by this vermin. Why the waning breath of striation? Everything the city breaks us is a chill. Bottom into the back, 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 the back, 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 towards gravity. Eat a meal a day. Keep distinction away. That hurts not walking. The finger is split down the animus. Real need of movement to make up for the silence, and what can we find? Bound to extension. Horny board noun. Let it only be the fat of juiceless living that glides down the abyss. We speak like sticks beside us in the gloating. 
Some know the secrets and secretions of each Drawn dimension. down into crunching magnet spells of time. This tongue, cast over the bricks, not one of yearning. No monument sculptural. No sculpture momentous. We have to reinvent feeling first. My name is the world's endlessness, and world has no humans in it. The first thing you'll probably notice about me is my tits. Nice and big and squirty, what a certain type of man likes. But my tits are made for no man, no child either. They're big like that because I need something to rest my arms on. My vag is a slit too small to fit a coin. Women used to hold on to me whenever they wished to get preggers. 25,000 years old and 11 centimeters tall. I jiggle for no one. I am happy and I belong to no woman now. I cannot tell you the name of the one that used to own me. My ass has a sort of mouth and a lot to say. I am not the first to be carved, only the one unlucky enough to be found. Now behind glass and unable to exercise the magic that is and was my sole function. Now I just have to lay here, a fat bitch for the world to abuse with its eyes. When I was infested with use value, I liked nothing more than the feeling of a woman's sweaty palms all over me. No man ever touched me, and if ever I were lucky enough to die, that's one thing I could be proud of. It was Dykes who invented porn. And no, I am not something to be moved inside the cunt. My mass is my goddamn victory, which is why so many feel compelled to kneel. It is not just my navel you are drawn to. A woman's body has many holes. It is our burden to provide the safety blanket of the entire race. Look closely at mine. You'll soon know something. My holiness is raw gorgiosity. Fat fuck holy for the masses. At times, unpleasant in my self-adulation, but it was part of the burden of being buried for so long. I needed something to hold on to. Oblong my hole, fucker. It is so nothing meant to be inferred. This thing I wear upon my head, the thing that erases all my features, that is pornography also. Stomach and scruffy vag are better than a face. I was never the thinking woman's doll. Thoughts came later and then annihilated my higher power. Look at this little dent above my right breast. The tiny, tiny puncture beneath my headpiece is the one that really gives me hope. Bet you didn't even see it. Really is fun to go from hold to behold. And no more competition from those fierce feral girls that used to always grab me. They have something else to learn now, buried as I was. Walk around to get a good view, my gorgeous heart-shaped ass. It's just too bad I have to be displayed like this, a metal rod going up it, as though I were a piece of junk on a stick, a corn dog. I don't want that plinth going up my ass. Who are all these motherfucking people anyway? I once served a real purpose, man. I'm talking the cosmos, all right? If you held me tight enough, you could get pregnant without ever having to touch a man. That is why they had to get rid of me for so long. 
These tits contain the groundwork for a whole other form of civilization. What the world wants is more chances to live. I know a lot about this, even though I'm not alive, because I'm a woman. What this means, I have the courage to be held. All that courage, all wrapped up in this hard, rocky stone. Come close and be afraid. I'm not moving, but thought has no cadence either. That doesn't mean it's not happening. My real joy is fitting in the palm of your hand. Small like a dick, and the right girth to disappear. If you call me mother, then it's your own weakness you're reveling in, bro. I am no one's sis, and I am pre-symbolic. Form happily altered by the sweat of your yearns. Look at you, on the other side of the glass, wishing to be alive. A man is just a freak with an accidental third leg. All creation is barbaric to a greater or lesser extent, and it is this barbarism I watch you constantly trying to get away from. What use are you, aside from this havoc? Munching on platitudes you present to those perceived to be greater? When the truth is, my surface matters no less than yours. It is all matter, this skin of disaster. Who so forth presents themselves denies the built-in capacity of breaking down. I only suffer from what I am discreetly subjected to. My elements are limited. A man is not a cause. Woman is the site of limitlessness. Beauty aches inside my crags, an entire night of deficiencies. This is what makes a day. No one really wants to marry the spectacle of naming. See inside the black inside, the babies shooting out of you. Tits need their support also. That is what stomach is there for. I ate and I ate until I became this oddity. All the men around me went hungry so that I could eat. I would not let them gorge themselves, neither on food nor on my body. And so the entire race starved while my women continued to produce more. For women are production, while the men merely want to consume. The male is the consumption drive my tits are eager to displace. My tits are a throne, this crown that fits on no man's head. If I had a face, then you would try to erase me. Instead, I have a body which serves as a horny threat. I am lucid, and I am scarred by pockmarks. Unlike most fatties, my flesh contains no sleeves. I may be a monument to softness, but I can also be used as a weapon. Deep inside my rocky cove, I harbor waves. Perforce, the earth turned sour. That was before love. There was a way. Form born out of rhythm. The body also. Through dreams, an ideal was bred. A body form like my own dwells in ideality. A time when dreams were not the electric burden they now are, but rather foretold things. The secret of being buried, absorbed. One experiences so much in stone. Hat covers my laughter. Nighttime now in Vienna. Everything closes down, and I'm still here, wrapped in the fog, counting the bells to know the time. When viewed from the human perspective, it is but a number. I know what time really is, a container that moves outside of all mathematics. 
that impossible wooden truth that gives stone, skin, their meaning. Cut into me, I told the woman who picked me up as a rock. She formed me with her tools. And look at me now, already and willing to be cannibalized. It is so funny how useless I am, I realize this suddenly and laugh inside. Because of me, there will always be more women than men in this world, and that's exactly how it should be. No one has outlived me so far, and I have absorbed all the poisons that the world has put forth. Grazing on contradictions, I am skin without organs, worth more than diamonds, and yet nothing. Female without sheen. The first phallus and the last to bleed. Touch without tactility. I want to eat fucking shit, America. It's my face you're always sitting on as I write this. The electric guitar spilled all over my tits, got sent there for sure. It's like a real motherfucker barks like a dog as he wolfs on down the raw ego fuck. Mountains of tender pussy finesse scrape the barrel of my understanding. Punctuated threats of novel sparse and no deep meaning. Free pussy on the trembling airplane. It crashes into disaster spillage and no more sleep for big money. Wad. His thorough pagedness frisks my burn electrical outside of giant dick douche time maze. My real world, your astronomical astonishment, closed eyes to the black gulf sentiment that ashes up all your eyeballs. Sleep gives me drum kit hard on, knock my head on concrete block to smell the real stars striped on my conal ambivalent sphere. This is how we goddamn construct the real. No one is safe, and no one wants to be. Be my enemy, and I will celebrate you into the cement. Jam a metal pole of my conscience and watch as I spew out a recycled vocabulary of constants. Puke unarmed vigilance into the morning robe of cerebral violent apathy. The real motherfuckers all know perfectly well what they're doing when they starve the innocents. Isn't that a nice private sphere of dwelling? Until the wrong race invades it, you are suddenly forced to confront all those dark brown fears that have been necessary to keep you going all those wasted years. All the goddamn regurgitated garbage that's kept you alive, swinging corpse-like from the flagpole, a flaccid trophy called guilt. There is no silence, that is the law I can taste. Lost in ethereal abandonment of precepts, hounded morale, barking fucked hypertrophy at sound of electric saw, cutting into metal sheep. I think about fucking a poodle a lot less than ludic conceptions of democracy haunt my intrepid on a hot red night LA cuff of dawn. Magnets splayed out in the coital hemisphere. Politicians' brain spans display on LCD monitor. Direct visions of trapezoidal lemming paths melt backwards right before molten begets explosion. Terror suspects masturbate behind concrete walls. Threat of hammer at least gives breathing room to the non-cause of life. 
laser booby trap pre-elucidates all possible becomings, which are strings of wire formatting electric hammock. Or of all death penalty inmates makes important announcement over prison intercom. The time of errorization has arrived. As I compromise the gracious lab of lucidity, name me a single prophet whose corporate interests have raped apart my own. Bald eagle, squawking plotless through a sky, fall down dead and poisoned the night air maniacal, the gallant fart of justice. Drug war sar hermaphrodites rebuke the slowness of today's meritocracy. Eating the stockbroker's cock for breakfast each morning, she started to feel a patriotic fervor and eventually led her home to Christ. I am a goddamn hot dog called America, rubber chicken. Justice will only be served by falling down, killing yourself in the eye of the tornado. Entire waves of fuck trespassing your being, which flips and fleets like pages torn from a glossy fashion mag, a Catholic bishop in North Korea. Athletic pick me up and fuck my brains out with the crashed car bumper that folds up inside my dearest membrane world and circular fries tomorrow like a curious goblin cunt whose hairs lied to the public investigator last Friday. Not caring about sleep, loving the paranoia that fries your brains as memories of the loudness that once deified your ambitions, gut lauded you into chaos, break breathing down your back break. You became a mummy the moment you started to manipulate. How can one look at the world and call it a culture? Baked your logic in a thin soup that forgot all about elevation and instead shat you out all the effectuality you once fantasized, limiting your intestines spewed out in a shopping spree cart, whose shape rhymed with this most putrid of lights shining in your diamond dishonesty. Shuttered like the day's design, no scattered pieces like the suicide bomber's mantelpiece. This my god solidify death's design. Twitchy folds, American faggotry owns no tyrants except locked instead with outer world ambitions. Suicide. To fucking die in America looks tough. A flower bent over like silhouettes, last dream's logic. Dolorous streams of bicentennial fuckery scream, no future at the public abortion gravesite. No shadows cast mean bloodsuckers constitute the majority today. Cock in a light socket, seen as final option, like a midnight scream ingrained in armchair fabric, dead and magnified suicide glamour, the radiance of shit listens in deadness that dematerialize your brain as you go through it, soft and lost, tenuous to the shatterings of former bone structures, victims' remains lost to the shame broadcast. Merging loads of fuck with stealth and hyperturbulence. I'm not feeling designed today, because being alive, there's no other way. Hold on the fence. I'm sorry, a passive bitch fuck that makes us all insane. Toxic. A cloud senator bounces on a rifle dildo war machine. Bitterness table sold to us at discount settlement site forever off center. Feral kid roaming the streets at night in a city that just ate him. Constancy is shielded, and then no one. 
Shopping redundancy is a snake pit made of silver fuel sparks. Term cradle intelligent and fucked less. The wicked battery spins. Here comes the last breath of honesty. The world and its perennial self-slaughter is willing to take on all those walking corpses. An erotic strain of decay waving like a beauty pageant queen at the loyal deserters whose army remains scarred and unpaid. There is nothing to be deserving of, and no losses, only a handsome visual feast that screams with the silence in your eyes and leaves us trapped, intrepid victims of the emotion economy, recycling feces and globular animosity. No mystery, and none that can satisfy the metal tube's craving for melting into lightness. Call up by the wreck mirror, and serve your country until you are martyred gruesome. Whose greatness is that? The awning is garbage. Burn self up and fucked like falling. The tower that watches watching will secure your ride to the next gate crash tragedy until there is no more yesterday worth fighting. My space, the godless garden of all. Stick to emerge the fragment. Pearl drop. Wood sings a song to stone. Where my baby daughter it blocked me from the sun. No, that ain't right. What I want to say is my baby doll is the sun. Where the robbers is, we be dry, the dun high. Oh, memories that slap you hard when you're dry. Some of us think in devolution more often than others. Ripped in the seams, my maiden china diaphragm got split in two bits. A child spilled out. Such a bloody mess. I am the madness of delicate. Tess. No one and their friends also. It was a summer. True. Vagrants were swarming the streets. You couldn't tell who a whore or not. Put dead baby on a blanket look up at the sky. Gave my baby my glasses to wear cause it blind. Grew into what's decent. A baby look at my old airplane. I had fantasies to abandon. That's right. Said it to the judge myself. Too warm for the blankie, I put it underneath. The baby's dirty, it got misguided. Cause people don't want it too far from home. That's cause they're afraid what they find. Living with your own dirt, filth, 
That's one thing. Uh, outer worlds. That's a whole other. Fine. Baby doll come right out of me. She's so sad she couldn't give birth to a piece of pure plastic. The Lord said something. Give me one chance to deny all these things that have happened to me. I will let reality burn. Sun had its eyes on me the entire time. Higher being the being. We found out from the gossipers surrounding us that something precious. It looks fake plastic, the diamonds. My heirs take Cheap drugs to remain attractive. That's what the sign said. Not something else. I don't remember. When my baby doll and mama want to die, the umbrella, a real big, a cloudy milk stain, lay me on a match. Plastic don't burn. It melt the sun. Its energy defeats me. We run some time logic dead. Umbrella's emaciated. Little girl wants practice at being mama one day. She has something to take care of. Night's feeling. Wild animal dives into trash can find a meal. All summer long that evil pile. A blanket is found. The dead baby had an armpit. Looking at it, you hear a fly buzz. Heavy torrent of no rain. Browned and greened in the seasonal slammer. The mother was off. She had found her lord meandering on the sidewalk. Reeked of a time when New York still had a working class. Baby got dusted. She'd be looking real special. Nah, she cried out. And then some Juices. She looked like she in a place where there ain't no territory. Mama's eyeglass prescription. Shit. The blind is sacred. Night is just a variance. It can have an orange to it. Blanket is majestic. So just lie down. Me and a towel. That was childhood. Nastiness. Maybe baby got left behind on an island. How long does it take for sand to cover a beach chair? Blinky blanket a monastery. Lion. Fallow before a bog. A change that flows beneath a life. Sound of the wind breaking that instrument. Its strings continue their song. With the gray light cast on my stillness, I am permitted to wait. Clouds eat my angular agency. Wooden is barren. Oh, beware. Eyeball eats sky also. Which eye is ceiling to be?
and what for. There are no angles. World is something contained. Specs keep still the self. A forecast block. The me inside the inanimate's longing. Bird scissors through. Cutting line across egg eye. Blue gap squeals through cloud machinery's blip of conscience. Days wait the gift of sound. Not fog, nor foregoance, but rather vehicles' achy groans before the halt. Please, evil airplanes stuck in the cloud, allow this stillness to echo throughout the frame. Let us not defer you from entering this place. We were there also more than a few times, perhaps, and our lungs could sing you the song. It is the bastard song, livid and hairy. A land with no such thing as soft punishment. Sacrifices were made in that last place. They weren't enough. This is where you have ended. Oh, oh, but I, I forgot. forgot. You were You're only a tourist. Tourist being a terminal part, part some are destined to play. White, white sheet innocence flapping. The sea that begat a world. Time will always do its thing, regardless of our cognizance or permission. A woman enters hell, it is her birthday, a throne, throne awaits her. her. These, These hands. One, One friend went off to study, to study the Torah, Torah in Jerusalem. An alarm, alarm bell went off. A fire in his throat. throat. Immersed Immersed so deep in the, in the word, he realized he would, he would never see another human form again. again. Who needs it? That, that sort, sort of collision. To feel a throat satisfied. satisfied. There were other, other conditions. Were they landed us here as well. well. To be a fire under the hot earth. On our, our way, way to not getting, getting lost, please enter, enter here. The voyage that spelled out this world and please go away. Providing a soundtrack to the silence to the, the hum that resides that outside of understanding, that, that buzz that's always going, even when we don't, we don't know a thing. thing. Will you stay here for just a season? We admit, we admit that there is also a sky. So many things other than it. We had, we had to format a repercussion. That's, that's what, what our game is. The wisdom, the wisdom of becoming, becoming eager. When the, when the words come, and you don't, you don't have, have to think about them, on a magic, magic couch that, that spells evil, ambulance up to the next highest sphere, here, here we train, train, alarmed by life. The poet, for certain, forgot to revise some things, and left us here squabbling. An argument ensued over which of us should bow. We all, we all three went at once, once crashed into each other while the poet, poet sat and watched. Two others embraced before us. The man, the man grabbed, grabbed the woman's ass. 
was a picture of supine decency. Leaning down, his hair brushed my chin. Every morning, a piercing alarm rings out. Substitute for the bells the skybound ones get. There are many layers. It is all, oh, a waterfall. The layers are circles. Standing in the tall grass, the flies buzzed around you. This is a foreign field, you thought, and I love it here. You had not, not yet felt, felt the perfection of the descent. The pagan awareness of being great without hope. Oh, oh I, love I love you, Sky. You are, you are the thing that disappears at the end of each day. The thing I will never see again. Having been bled here, here for so long, long bled to the indeterminate sea of night. The old poet to the young poet said, I wish to celebrate you using no other organ than my lungs. And so he proceeded, this is hell on earth engulfing them. The three shadows bent down, suddenly cold, wintry air seemed not so sallow. And the poets took off in flight. Because, because enlightenment, enlightenment doesn't, doesn't come from standing in the same place for so long. Here, Here I sit, here surrounded by books and you, dreaming. Life, Life is, is but a scam. scam. You, have you have to learn, to learn how, how to take, take it back. back. That's, That's what Baudelaire, Baudelaire called le voyage. Hold on really, really tight. tight. Hell is a roller coaster. The, the creamed eclipse, eclipse that led us here. What a, what a fright. fright. Still, the servants, the servants bowed down to greet us, as though honored, honored to show us such a terrible time. Here where stone casts its final form. We, we went together, and a woman, woman will soon appear to show us the way out. There, there are four things. There's a word, there's an image, there's sound, there's a gesture. You and I, my sweet friend, we are partial to the last of those because it is so fleeting. Much like feeling, impossible to reproduce. The adventure is in the trying. And as I hold your soft head in my arms, the fire of souls burns beneath us incessantly. It is time, time for us to go, to go together, together walk, walk through, through those flames, find, find out what will happen. I have long been dead, so let, let me be your guide, past, past these tormented, tormented shadows, straight into the writing, writing that occurs once the ink has run out. out.